Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Evelyn coming to you live from the camera store and we're very excited tonight to present How to Spark Your Photographic Creativity with Lens Baby. And this is a live show which means anything can happen, but tonight we have our TCS TV live dream team working behind the scenes to make sure that everything goes as smoothly as possible. And tonight that includes Drew and Chris just to make sure that everything goes nice and smooth. And this event is sponsored by Lens Baby. They're very involved in this event if you, if you haven't guessed. Um, and a big shout out to the team tonight. We've been working with Jonathan, Michael, and Lindsay to pull this together. And tonight we're also honored to have Lens Baby co-founder Craig Strong join us in a little bit to tell us the story of Lens Baby and what it's all about if you're not familiar. And we're also going to be joined by two wonderful Lens Baby photographers. We have Kathleen Clemens and Uta Rackhorn who are going to talk about how to use these different products from Lens Baby towards enhancing your creativity. And this is applicable to both photography and video video. Um, and this is of course right here on TCS TV Live. And the very best part about live streams is being able to live interact with all of you. And so I want to give you a couple options on how to do that. Of course there is the live chat that's part of YouTube, but if you're not logged in and you still want to participate, we also have the option for you to email me. And so you can email me at evelyn at the camera store.com and I'll be able to check both feeds uh, for questions. So make sure you keep them coming throughout the presentation. We will have an open Q&A with everyone at the end, uh, but we will take some throughout the presentation as well. Um, and lastly, before I introduce the guests of the evening, I want to once again thank Lens Baby as the sponsor and today is really special because we actually just are launching a special partnership with Lens Baby where we're the Canadian dealer and so as part of that we've worked with them to offer a special deal on a bunch of products um, and that includes the beautiful velvet selection just in time for Valentine's Day they're 15 percent off um, and these are stunning lenses we're going to talk about some of them tonight um, we also have the Trio 28 um, which is a really funky, fun lens. I mean, they're all really fun and funky, but um, lots of great stuff. We also have the Omni collection on sale. There's also some bonus gifts that we're throwing in. And so if you go to thecamerastore.com and you're in Canada, you can shop all those special deals. Um, and we're just so thrilled to have this uh, special partnership with Lens Baby. Um, we also have some fun prizes for people that registered for this event. Um, and so if you complete our survey about the event, you'll be entered to win some camera store swag that we will ship to you. Um, and if you didn't register and you want to get in on that draw, again, email me, evelyn at thecamerastore.com, and I will add you to the list very happily. Um, and so our first guest tonight is Craig Strong, who I mentioned is the co-founder and chief creative officer at Lens Baby. And he transitioned actually as a staff photographer position for a bunch of weekly newspapers. And then he's photographing for the Los Angeles Times, the New York Times, Sports Illustrated, and numerous other magazines and publications. He's also done over a decade of doing freelance photography, commercial wedding, portrait work, He's kind of done it all in the photography world. Um, and then after that, he realized that there was kind of a lack of affordable tools to realize some of his creative vision. Um, and so they looked towards making the tools that we're going to talk about tonight. And so I want to welcome Craig Strong. Thanks for joining us at DCS TV Live. Thanks, Evelyn. It's good to be here. Awesome. So Photographers and inventors, they're very different things. Um, obviously, sometimes as photographers, we think to ourselves, hey, I wish that there was this tool that could do this thing. So can you tell us a little bit about what you were trying to achieve when there wasn't those types of tools available on the market? Absolutely, yeah. I think uh, if I look back, I think about that creativity that had one outlet, which was through photography primarily, and it quickly started uh, wanting other outlets. And I think as any time we're growing and we're, we're exercising our, our muscles and creativity, we're, we're gonna be looking for other ways for that to come out, either in different types of photography or in different arenas. And so for me now, as, as you know, I like to say, I play an engineer on TV, um, I'm pulling on a lot of what I learned as a photographer to be nimble, to be ready, to look for new opportunities. And uh, that transition really happened for me when I came up with a product that all my friends were like, how are you taking pictures like that? And can you make me one? And it just started started snowballing from there. And, and we ended up with a company that we started 
over 18 years ago and and we were off to the races. Can you tell us a little bit about why the name Lens Baby? I mean, I feel like anytime we're at the camera store, we mention it, people kind of give us a sideways look because it, it sounds a bit <laughs> odd. I mean, it's kind of an oddball name. Um, how did you come up with that? Well, I, you know, that was a brainstorm between my wife and I in the car. And I was like, I gotta, I, sh I should register a URL. And so we, we need a name. And she said, well, describe the lens. And how's it different than everything else out there? Well, I said, well, it's small. I said, it's kind of cute. It's, um, you know, I like, I want to say baby lens, but then that takes me to baby Ruth, which takes me to Caddyshack and the scene in the pool. And, <laughs> you know, she was just waiting for me to shut up because as soon as I said baby lens, she's like lens baby. And it came out of her mouth and it was like angels sang. So I look back on that moment and it made sense in that moment, but what happened was we came out with a memorable name that was very different than what was on the market. And so, you know, getting a sideways look may be the first thing for somebody to say, hey, what is that about? Is that something I'm curious about? And I think I think it has helped us set up set ourselves apart with the name. And and in a similar way, we set ourselves apart with the kind of products we brought out. All right. And for those that haven't had the privilege of actually being able to see what a lens baby is, um, I mean, now we have quite a range of products um, from, you know, like I said, one of my favorites, the, the velvet 85 millimeter mm -hmm. portrait lens that produces these beautiful, creamy, dreamy, ethereal looking portraits um, to some very interesting, you know, magnetic pieces that go in the front of your lens do some really fun, creative effects. Um, can you just talk a little bit about what the vision of Lens Baby is all about and in going into some of these products? Yeah, so I would say the DNA of Lens Baby is that we want to give you something that, that is not readily available out there. You might be able to go make something for yourself. That's the way I started doing it. Uh, because I couldn't get the kind of photography, get the images on my digital camera that I was seeing some of my more artistic photographer friends who were shooting on 120 film and cross-processing and, and plastic cameras and all of that. They were able to do it with technology that I didn't really want to go backwards with because I'd gotten a digital camera and uh, I just wanted to try new stuff. Here, actually, let me show you some of the original uh, experimentation that I did and that might might cue you into um, kind of what how my crazy brain was thinking at the time um, <laughs> this is actually uh, a, a just terrible lens that I found <laughs> in New York after I bought a Canon D30 it was the first ca uh, digital camera that I ever considered and and uh, I ended up in New York City with a 28 millimeter and it wasn't wide enough because I had a 1.6x crop. So I, I bought this lens, I screwed it on the front and it was not sharp. And I was disappointed for about five minutes. And then I started making images with it that had this sweet spot of focus, had this craziness going around, the colors were amazing. If I stopped it down, I could get something sharp, but I could also focus this beetle, its butt is literally touching the, the front of my lens uh, with this accessory on and or the front of this accessory lens. And so I started seeing things that I just couldn't see before. And so uh, that was the beginning of, oh, what else can I put on my camera? Um, I started taking it to weddings and I shot way too many pictures uh, with it. And uh, but for the most part, everybody loved it. And I was able to match my subject matter. A really odd subject matter like this would probably fall a little bit flat with a normal lens. But with this crazy lens, I felt like, okay, this is what I'm after. Not only the crazy wide angle, but also uh, the weirdness going on with the colors and things in the background. So one day I'm sitting at my desk uh, trying to avoid editing a wedding, I, if I remember correctly. And <laughs> I had been asked to teach a workshop based on those crazy images, some of them that you had, uh, that I just showed you by Kevin Kubota. I didn't have anything to teach. I looked around at my, my uh, view camera. It was a, actually a press camera from uh, the 1940s, 1950s, and it had this lens on it that had all this back focus, which was a challenge. I'd been trying to modify my medium format lenses to fit onto my uh, 
35 millimeter so that I could tilt them. And I realized I've got lots of room with this one. Now I just need a way to block out the light. And so this was the very first prototype of what ended up being the form factor of the original lens baby. And I started shooting weddings with that. And I got this beautiful slice of focus. You can see this is actually the first weekend, probably the day after I figured out that I could use shop back hose to block out the light and I could actually focus it. And I'm shooting up at Mount Hood. This is at Timberline. And this is the groom in between two of his groomsmen. And I had the slice going right up the, the uh, line on the, the lift here. And I was able to create images I just couldn't do with, I couldn't create with any of my other image, uh, my other uh, lenses. Um, well, it looks like this has crashed. Oh, no, maybe not. Um, and let's go back here. Well, I am going to escape here. Can you still hear me, Evelyn? Yeah, I can still okay. hear you. And I Great. see your screen well, of uh, this soldier image. Yeah, so the soldier image is one from the very first prototype that I made that was essentially the original lens baby uh, without the interchangeable apertures. Because once I went and taught workshops with Kevin Kubota, I had uh, <laughs> I had no way to um, to replicate those lenses because most of them I pulled off of other cameras, 120 folding cameras, my press camera. And how am I going to sell those? Those are my babies. Like those are one of a kind. And so I started looking for optics that I could, I could source and I was not an optical engineer. And I found that essentially a, a 5X loop, which is approximately a 50 millimeter focal length would give me a, a focusable lens that gave me an effect that was similar to that original or that that very first crazy lens when my 28 millimeter uh, 1.8 was wide open. And I found myself a few weeks later in uh, Red Square photographing Red Square in a way that Red Square had never been photographed before. And it just really, you know, lit me up for this project. And within four months we were at my my business partner sam and i were at wppi introducing essentially this very same lens with a much better build quality uh to photographers there and mainly wedding photographers i'm going to try and um get out of lightroom force quit and hopefully i don't get kicked out of the zoom there we go there we go <laughs> i see your faces again perfect <laughs> um so yeah that was that was the early history and i would say the dna of our product line was that it was trying to do something that was not readily available i couldn't find the tools to do what i was after and the tools that kind of hinted in that direction like like tilt shift lenses they were they were too good and they were too technical so i i wanted something that was more intuitive and more for special effects than technical perfection yeah something that you could tinker with like in the way that you tinkered and create yeah one of a kind images because because exactly. really when you're um moving something like the composer um here i'll pull it out here, maybe Chris can show it on the screen. Um, you know, it's something that you're actually physically moving it around and it, it, you know, you are creating one of a kind images when you're using a tool like this. Well, and you can stand right next to somebody shooting with a lens baby and the, the chances of you getting the same thing are so remote versus standing next to someone with the same kit lens or the same focal length lens um, normally and you're pretty much going to get the same image you know with different different composition maybe a little different zoom but the the variables are much greater with the lens baby so i have a question about what has happened in the last few years because of course a lot of the lens baby products were lenses or lens accessories that are integrated within the lens itself and then you came out with the omni um, and here i'll pull this up here so the idea of the omni is actually putting objects in front of a lens and working with the light to bend the light and do crazy things with it um, how did this come to be what was the concept behind it yeah this three-dimensional thing that we call a filter is uh is a way to use your lenses that aren't lens baby or are lens baby in some cases, at least the standalone versions like the velvets work. Um, and the, the biggest thing was we saw people out there holding 
holding prisms and, and various pieces of glass and chandelier glass and all sorts of stuff in front of their lenses. But then you've got a whole hand that's that's uh, dedicated to that and it's not necessarily repeatable. So this, this allows you to move your effect and your crystal or your filter into place. And unlike what I'm doing right here, which I can create some cool video, um, it, it allows you, once you've found your spot, you can now focus on uh, literally focusing or zooming or doing the things you want without always having to be dedicated to holding this. So this is this is an extra hand in that sense, um, but it also is allowing for a three-dimensional uh, placement of filters so that you can just affect one area of your image or the entire image depending on how you're placing it and the size of your front element. Um, but but there's lots of different things too, so that we're taking things that, you know, what's the use of a filter that covers your entire lens that does this, but if you just want to impact one area of your image or one corner and then, you know, the other two or three uh, other corners of your image could all be different filters because you can put lots of different things on here. So it's an extra hand and it's a three-dimensional way to put things in that people would have never called filters before, but we get to do things different, so we call them filters. Absolutely, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there's even the option to put in some of your own objects if you wanna utilize the tool system to create your own special effects that, that are unique to you. I, I'm gonna ignore that question because uh, that that's in development, but it is right around the corner, and uh, we love little leaks like this, so. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> Now, we have a question here from Tim Pack. How do you explain to people when they inquire about the repeatability or the consistency of lens baby lenses? The repeatability or consistency. I would say that, that the biggest unrepeatable aspect of lens baby is the, the squishy lens. And that's what we came out with. This is our DNA uh, or, or our very first lens baby and it's what my innovation was that allowed me to start this company was this focus and tilt mechanism had never been um, uh, you know used in in quite the way that we implemented it so this is not repeatable every single image that you're going to take your fingers are going to change a little bit position uh, their position a little bit the angle the the focus is going to be a little di bit different and it's more of a dance it's, it's less of a uh, it's less of a methodical, repeatable process. And we, uh, we brought that out in 2004. And, um, and so that is still something that you can buy. This is the original Spark. We sell the Spark 2.0 right now. Um, and what we did with our lenses is we did two things. One, we allowed you with the, the lenses that needed to bend, uh, we allowed you to bend them and leave them in place. So each one of them has, of the composers, have a tensioner. So this last silver ring that you see on the Composer Pro 2 here is, uh, as you tighten that down, you can, you can tighten the tension on the ball. Um, and then after you found the right tilt or the placement for your sweet spot or the how thin you want your, your slice of focus to be, you can, you can focus and not have to worry about affecting that tilt. And then you let go and unlike with uh, this guy and with all of our squishy lenses, you let go of this one and it stays put. So you can do star photography, you can do long exposures, you can do all sorts of different stuff that you couldn't have with the flexible lenses. Okay, and I just got clarification from Tim that he said, uh, what I mean is we mentioned that you can't get the same results as someone beside you, so people might under misunderstand and think that you can't get repeatable results. So maybe we can gotcha. clarify so, that. So uh, I would say that, yes, you could get the same results as the person beside you, but the chances are very slim because essentially you have infinite number of positions that you could tilt this. Uh, if somebody's pointing it straight ahead, they're going to get, if they've got an edge optic like I have here, the edge 35, they're going to get a flat field. It's going to look like a beautiful prime. 
Um, and then if they tilt all the way, they're going to get an amazing amount of um, blur outside of a very thin slice. And so I would just say because every aperture is going to give you a different look with the lens baby, every amount of tilt, and uh, you know, then you've got all the all the regular variables like your focal length and and uh, your your composition. But lens baby adds a lot of variables in there, and I'm just saying that it's unlikely the person next to you is going to. Um, choose all those variables the same as you. Excellent. So, Craig, now that you have a huge selection of Lens Baby products, we're talking about how long ago you started this. What is the Lens Baby product that you always go back to and you say, this has been my mm. favorite through the whole process? I do have favorites uh, <laughs> of my babies. And I would say that the, the one that surprises me the most that I did not expect to be a, a favorite was, it was actually a last minute addition to our optic swap system. And that was the, the pinhole zone plate optic. Um, and it was very low tech in the way it was produced. The images were crazy, not good in any technical way, but it, it rendered scenes with without the information that that i expected there was no sweet spot it was it was giving me it's a it's a pinhole you know zone plate has a little more underlying detail but then it has all this glow over that detail i mean like like crazy glow and uh and not a lot of detail and so i had to go out and i had to find subject matter that i could I could convey the emotion. I could convey the experience of um, I'm, and if, if I can get Lightroom to start back up here, I'll uh, I'll show you a couple images there. But I would say it's the pinhole lineup, and we came out with the pinhole zone plate in 2008, and most recently in 2021 we came out with uh, the Obscura lineup, and that uh, that gives us a. Um, a whole other level of uh, pinhole both technology because the way we made it was very different than any other pinhole that I'm aware of has been made, uh, but also options in that space. So, and the reason it's my favorite, it's the furthest away from what a normal lens can do. Fantastic. We have a few really good questions and I just want to take a quick second and say do keep those questions coming uh, throughout all of the presentations. We are going to chat here with a couple of photographers soon who use Lens Baby products for their work to get creative. Um, but even if you have questions for Craig uh, for afterwards, we're all going to come back on and do a Q&A. So definitely if you think of something, pop it in there. Um, right now we have one from Linda saying that she uses a vintage 4x5 camera which is awesome. And uh, are there any lenses that are made for analog as well as um, the digital mount lenses? Um, I would say that obviously the ones that are mirrorless only are only for digital because, you know, even though I'd love to come out with a, a film camera for, for all those mirrorless lenses, most of them are autofocus and we'd have to figure that out too. Um, the, the ones that are the most compatible with analog any of the SLR lenses, um, I, I think probably because it's the most old world in its look, I, I would go for the Velvet system, uh, the Velvet series, if I was shooting on film and an SLR. So that, that would be uh, probably my favorite combo. But again, any of the, uh, any of the lenses, I would say that if, if you're shooting film, on this and you have to get you know a, a high percentage of your images so that you're not throwing away you know <laughs> one out of every two you know everything but one out of every two rolls of pictures 36 images then uh, i would probably stay away from this guy in in the slr mount but because it's more repeatable the edge system uh, especially would be a great one, or the edge optics in the Composer Pro system would be a great option. Excellent. And we got a couple of questions from youth, Ruth and Yvonne um, asking about Micro Four Thirds. So I'm going to kind of combine their questions here. Um, but they have heard that with Micro Four Thirds, it's best not to use the tilt on the Composer Pro. Is that correct? And then Yvonne adds that uh, she likes the effect of the velvet, but has also heard that it's not good on Micro Four Thirds. Um, do we have any oh, recommendations? I don't know. I don't know about the velvet. Now, with the tilt on the the 
Composer Pro, the, the reason I tell people not to tilt, especially when they start, is whether, regardless of their, their, um, uh, their sensor size, is because it allows you, you you're using, especially, I'm going to put in a, a Suite 35 into my Composer Pro 2. And so I've just swapped out the, the look of this from a flat field lens that when it's pointed straight ahead, looks just like a great prime. To now I've got the, the Suite 35, which has a spherical field of focus. So the tip of that, that uh, kind of cone almost, uh, straight out from the lens, has most of your resolving power, and that forms your sweet spot. If you're tilting this, this tilts way off to the side, and especially if you're tilting on a smaller sensor, uh, it could tilt it completely, completely off your sensor. But if you're tilting it at all, when you're getting to learn it, it's really hard to know where to look to find your spot of focus. So I recommend that people get used to focusing with it pointed straight ahead. And then the, the issue of the micro four thirds is that that because this tilts enough for a full frame, it will immediately, almost immediately, move your sweet spot off your frame. And so you're going to, a little tiny tilt goes a long way on the smaller sensors, especially micro four thirds. On velvet, I would say that the effect is strongest on the smallest sensors. So you can get an even more impressionistic image uh, than a full frame image that's not cropped. So uh, velvet, you may need to stop down to 5.6 to get the effect that everybody else is getting at f2.8. But at 1.6, you're getting more effect than anybody can get on a full frame sensor. So in that sense, I, I think it's pretty great. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to get one more question um, before we, we go on to the our ambassadors this evening, talk about their creative photography. Um, but then we can get back to some more of the technical questions at the end. Um, but this one's actually from a local person, Zach, asking if we have Lens Baby in our Try Before You Buy or rental program. Um, at the moment, we don't. But this new partnership that we have with Lens Baby, we're hoping to facilitate a lot more things. And so, Zach, make sure that you stay in touch with me because we would love for you to be able to have the opportunity to try out something um, and we'll find a way for you to, to be able to test something out if it's that you're curious in. Um, so thank you for that question. Um, well, Craig, I think um, we're going to chat with Uta next about her creative awesome. photography and then we'll pop back on uh, to chat with you afterwards for the Q&A. Thanks, Evelyn. All right, so the, what we're going to do is we're going to see a video from Uta quickly and uh, to introduce her and her work. Hi, I'm Uta, also known as California Lover, and this is my studio. I love to take my camera wherever I go, but my favorite place of all is the beach. And to be able to document this location over and over again in different ways, in different colors, um, with light leaks and streaks is my greatest joy. I just love to bring my little crystals and wands and um, love to catch the, the mundane and make it special. Um, I just love it when, when I show something that the naked eye can't see. I guess I also incorporate my, my memories and how I feel in my work. Um, so this pier, for example, if you look closely at my work, um, is featured endless times. And it's not always easy to come up with a new version of it, but when it happens, it's sheer magic. And my bendable lenses, like the Composer with all the interchangeable optics, helps me to um, come up with new versions of the same old, same old. And I guess we all have struggled with it during COVID for the last two years to be confined and to stay at home, wherever that is. I hope I can inspire you to pick up your your lenses, your Omni ones, and just play a little, catch the light and see what you can come up with. And um, that would be my greatest joy. And after this video, I'm here for questions and um, would love to show some more of my work. Enjoy.
Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about Uta before we bring her up on the screen live. Um, but she is a Los Angeles-based photographer, Uta Reckhorn, and she started her photography journey back in 2012. And after picking up her first lens baby back in 2015, she fell in love with the playfulness and the ever-growing community of lens baby artists. And that is one thing that is really special about lens baby is that there are lots of photographers across all the social media platforms that like to play with their photography using the Lens Baby tools. And Uta is an ambassador um, in the community and a lot of people look up to her and her work. Um, she originally documented her own family of five and blended her photographic skills and inspiration that comes from 20 years of moving around the globe with roots all around the world and a deep love for the California lifestyle. And that's her inspiration. She creates portraits and landscapes that evoke emotion and a sense of movement. Um, and we were talking before we started the show show how much people like us that are sometimes in you know the deep winter months when things are cold and frozen and looking at Uta's work is always just such a breath of fresh air it's so beautiful and and warm and inspiring and um, and I just want to welcome Uta and we can chat about your work Thank you so much. That's a very nice welcome. Thank you. Yeah, I feel um that goes both ways the whole um uh, inspiration when people say that they love to see the pictures from California when it's deep winter everywhere else in the world. Um, it almost inspires me even more to capture what we have here. Um, it's a little bit like like feeling or wanting to share the, the beauty here. And um, I was very excited when I came across Lens Baby so many years ago um, because I felt like um, the lenses and the, so later on the Omni ones really allowed me to um, break free with traditional um, from from traditional photography. Um, I guess at the time when I found out about Lens Baby, I was at a point where I was a little bored with my photography. I felt like that a uh, um, traditional lens allowed me not really to express what I wanted to express, even though at that time, I think I didn't even know what it was, but I knew there was something lacking. And when I first tried a lens baby lens, um, it was like getting into a new universe and um, helped me to get closer to what I wanted to create. Um, yeah, I have been super grateful. And I guess my my biggest passion are the Omni filters. I love all the lenses. I um, especially love the um, composer and the optic swap system. That's um, it's just fascinating how that works. But the Omni filters, they were like my breakthrough. I remember trying them out and, and using them for like 12 weeks and I couldn't get anything. It was like, oh, what am I doing here? And then eventually I got there, you know, I was like, oh, this is what it is about. And I just love how it manipulates the light. And I think um, it really taught me also a lot about light and, and how to use light and um, how to infuse color into my photography. So when you first saw the Omni system, were you immediately attracted to it or were you kind of like me where you weren't really sure because it looked very bizarre compared to any other product? Like where, what was your mindset when you first saw it? It was already used to bizarre because I had touched the composer, you know, and that was my bizarre moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really hard to shock me at that stage. And at the same time, I had played with prisms. I had bought okay. prisms and they had, I, I couldn't figure out how to use them. I had seen work from other photographers that I adored, you know, it looked so simple. So I was playing with, with these triangular, big, large prisms and it wasn't working for me. And then when I saw the Omni filters, I love colors. So they were colorful, you know, and then they were shiny. And, and what I also like, they are um, small. So you can carry them without having to carry a big bag. So that is always a big bonus for me when something is lightweight. Um, and I think they made me, they gave me a freedom. Not knowing what to do with these things really helped me to just play. So I think I was intrigued. I was not not afraid <laughs> no not really i was i was intrigued it's like oh new new cranes kind of you know new pens new pencils something new brushes something exciting love it love it well let's take a look at some of your work uh you had some really yeah. great examples okay let me share my screen with you guys i hope it all works yes looks great all right so um 
I've put um, this slideshow together for you guys. Let me see if this plays. That would be super convenient. And um, OK, can you see my screen? Can yes. you see the? All right. OK, so I started with this image because that was um, my most controversial uh, picture so far. Um, I took it if I oh, it was taken with the Burnside 35 and um, it was at that time still a pretty new lens for me. And I was fascinated by the bokeh, the swirly bokeh that it created. Um, and this picture is by technical standards, not a focus, but to me that never mattered. It is about the feel of being at the beach. It's a sunny day and to be able to be so close to that bird and to capture that and the motion and everything fascinated me. And I um, felt a need to share that image, um, but there were people who really hated that image um, and got very vocal about it. And that was a first for me. Um, I had never had any issues online so far, so it was kind of rough for me. Um, and in the beginning, I was almost tempted to delete this image, but then later it did something else for me. Um, it was liberating, you know, it's like, it doesn't matter what other people think. I find it pretty and um, pretty quickly I had um, a lot of friends who chimed in who were like, no, it's, it's an amazing image. And then I learned um, that it is, of course, hard to express yourself in the way you have to, but once you do it, it is um, fun. You know, it's it's authentic, and um, this is what Lens Baby does for me, and why I love the products so much. They give me so much freedom with that, um, a lot of joy, and that helps me to be the photographer I always wanted to be. Wonderful. Let's head on. Are you able to are you able to hide the um, the gray sidebar by any chance of the settings? The gray sidebar, it's hidden on my screen. So if I see a full screen slideshow. What do you see? We just see a gray bar on the right hand side. From like huh. So you see. Is oh, there it we go. Now? Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, I yeah, think even maybe like if you just okay. scroll, scroll through these without uh, yeah, enabling the slideshow. I'll yeah. do that. OK, so let's move on to the next image. Um, this is another image that um, was kind of a big milestone for me. It was taken, obviously, with the um, was it an Omni wand. Um, it was taken with one of the crystal ones, the multicolored crystal ones. And I still remember I was standing in this location and a guy was walking by. So what you see here is I'm on a pier. And on the left side of, of the image, there's like a, a plaque on, in a wall and it's shiny and the sun is reflecting on the wall. And then I was holding the Omni one. And so I created these um, multiple um, create, uh, reflections. And the guy was walking by and he looked at my camera and at the Omni filters, he's like, what is that? I've never seen anything like that before. And that's another fun uh, side effect when you use Lens Baby. I feel photographers are often very um, tend to be isolated people. Um, um, they do their own thing. They don't talk much. They try to um, blend in for obvious reasons. Um, but when you use lens, maybe lenses or um, omni filters, um, people are often fascinated and it's a good icebreaker. <laughs> so yeah, fun. Um, this picture was taken with the Edge 35. No, 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 that's a lie. Um, Sweet 50. And um, that was my first lens, baby lens. Um, and I was in love with the playfulness of the bokeh. So depending on how you tilt the lens, um, the shape of the bokeh is not circular, but oval, as you can see in this image. And I just love to create work that I haven't seen before. And that's that's something that's a big goal of mine in photography. And um, I couldn't do that with a regular 35. You know, it's just not doable. I, I also not with a regular 50. But um, the playfulness is something I can never get enough of and also the energy that you can transmit with that. Let's move on. So here I was using the Velvet 28, um, another favorite lens of mine. What I love about this lens is that you can get so close to your subject. And if you use it the right way, um, if you blur up your foreground, um, you get this beautiful bokeh in the, in the foreground and then the sharpness in the background. Um, it's a great travel lens because you can do anything with it. You can use it for macro photography. You can use it for street photography. And um, yeah, it's, it's just a great lens. And I love how it's so easy um, to focus. 
Beautiful. And Uta, we have a question here um, just asking if you use the Omni system on a regular lens or if you're also pairing it usually with a lens baby lens. Um, yeah, I kind of expected that question. So <laughs> there is no real recipe for me. Um, I, I typically do something new every day. So I, I'm a person, I need a lot of um, uh, um, change in my life so I get easily bored. So what I do when I go out in the afternoon, I grab either my Fuji or my Canon and then depending on which camera I take, I have either a regular lens or a lens baby lens. It really is all about how I feel on that day. And I use the Omni filters with any lens I own because I hardly ever use the um, filter system. I only hand hold the um, Omni filters. So with that, I have a lot of freedom. I even use the Omni filters with my iPhone. So I always have them. I always wear a bum bag and I always have some kind of Omni filters with me, um, sometimes just the foils because they are um, zero weight. Um, sometimes the glass filters and whatever is with me, I use that day. So no real recipe, no real answer. Um, but I feel that is the beauty about it, that there is no right or wrong. You know, you can do whatever you want. And they can mix a regular scene like this. I mean, I was standing there and this is uh, my hometown and I have seen it a million times. It is kind of so normal. But with then when you use the Omni filter and you get the reflection on the top, it all of a sudden looks like a magical place. So the next picture here um, is yeah, I often photograph seagulls. I'm fascinated by their freedom. Um, and I love to come up with, with new ways of portraying them. So in this case, there's an Omni filter in the lower part of the image. And I just feel it adds a little sense of adventure instead of just having a silhouette of a bird, which can also be pretty, of course. But um, I love how this add warmth and a little um, color contrast, the blue and the red and the orange, they go so well together and it, it makes the picture immediately a little more interesting. Another favorite use of mine of the Omni filters is um, when you can use it um, for reflections. Here I have used the stretch glass. Um, Craig was holding it earlier. You might remember when the um, screen looked a little um, stretched. So depending on which side you use, you have a curved side and you have a flat side. If you use the flat side, it creates a beautiful reflection. If you use the curved side, you will create the streaks. So here you see the streaks I was talking about. So things that are in the picture, if you use the, um, if, um, the, the stretch glass with the curved side, it will create, uh, it will stretch the image in that area, which is also beautiful. It looks like a painting, I think. Yeah, here I, um, another use of the Omni filters um, is what I love is um, when you have these little uh, light, um, um, light, like light bulbs, you know, you could create a spotlight. Um, you can add so much interest with that to an image that um, might otherwise be a little boring. And then for many people, it's maybe not boring because it's the beach. But for me, I mean, it's available every day. And um, it can sometimes be tricky to come up with a new um, way of looking at it. And Omnifil just really helped me to see things in a new way. Like here, I just um, was holding a um, glass wand in front of my optic. In this case, this was taken with my Fuji and a regular lens. I think it's a 18 millimeter lens. And um, yeah, that's one of my um, favorite ways of using that. And I just love to to add a little bit to the to the um, feel of a night, you know, with with the, a way you can stretch the lights out and um, have these light beams and stuff like that. Um, another thing that I love to do is using the multicolored Omni ones and to create these dreamscapes. Um, I told you already, I love, love, love colors. So whenever something gets really colorful, it's like oh, so satisfying for me. Um, this is just a regular hill at the sea and I've been there many times and it is another location where it's kind of difficult to come up with something new and when i was holding my omni filter and i had these um the repetition of the hill and then the person in the foreground was like oh my god this is so cool it's beautiful. and then i feel once you feel that joy when you work with these products it's contagious you know that image was taken on um, the same night so when you have an image like that i feel so inspired it's like then i turn around okay what else can i do you know and um it just spirals from there 
Um, this is another uh, favorite thing that I love to do um, to stretch out lights at night with the with the little glass ones. Um, I think it gives a regular landscape. Um, it's, it's like it's about storytelling. You know, what is that? Is that a, an unknown flying object coming by? Is it a car? Is it a lighthouse? What do we see here? It's it, it adds another layer. And that's the same location, just turning left, turning right. And there were cars driving by and you see the um, lights of the cars and um, you don't have to work with long exposures. It's just holding the piece of glass and you get the um, soft colors and I just love that. Um, same technique, different location here at the beach. Um, more beach shots and colors. <laughs> Um, here I went crazy. Um, you might be able to tell from this image, um, which is my favorite color. It's red. <laughs> um, this is an example of the um, what Craig just showed, the, the squishy lens. So it's um, what he said is true. It is difficult to create focus. But I think there is room for images that are not in focus. And I have people who pay money for that because it's like a it's like a dream. You know, it's something you cannot do with another lens. I mean, you could paint that image, but to photograph something like that is, is really impossible. And this is what I love about lens baby lenses, the freedom. Um, for a while, I worked with doubled exposures and omni filters. That was also fun. Um, just trying to get um, a new way of looking thing of of looking at things. Um, so here you see um, two images in one. One is um, of the water, and then the other one is the landscape in itself. And um, that was something I have been doing last year. I worked with a lot of double exposures. Um, and omni filters, and I just oh, I can't get enough of that. Um, it's also interesting to work with portraits. I unfortunately don't have enough um, people at the moment, so the, that has been a little difficult during COVID. And as I said, my daughter is um, a little over it of being my model. But when I get a chance, I love playing with this. And I think this is so cool. I mean, it's something um, people might be able to work really hours in Photoshop to create something like that. But this was at home at my front door, just like that, Omni filter, boom, done. Yeah, more dreamy beachscapes. I just love it when you get that feel of being alone at the beach and the whole um, um, mood of, of a wide open sky and um, flat landscape. And I often use the, the Omni filters to blend out something that might be um, distracting, like footsteps or um, maybe trash or something on the ground. So this looks so clean, um, but it is just an omni filter in the foreground that also stretches out the, the silhouette, the shade of the silhouette. More sparkles. And um, here it's another use of the reflection wand, the, the stretch glass. Here I was using um, the side that creates the reflection. It was a calm night with a reflection in itself, but in the foreground there was sand and I just added the um, Omni wand and it was super easily done. I just gave you the vibes. This is another favorite of mine. It's almost like neon colors. <laughs> it depends on what time of the day you photograph. So I mostly um, go out around um, golden hour. And something I recommend when you are new to Omni ones, I uh, would recommend to go later is better. So this was even after sunset, but you can still get magnificent colors. You can shoot into the sun, which you can't do when you, um, or I don't do when the sun is up high because it will create um, highlights that are not that pretty. But around sunset is magnificent. Um, we have a question here, actually, just to interrupt you quickly, um, from Debbie McKay. And uh, mm -hmm. she wants to know if uh, if it which lens it was um, with the that sort of squishy effect. Um, that was the Spark 2.0, and I used the Sweet 50 in it. Cool. All right. So I continue here. Good question. 
um, stretch glass and here again double exposures um, with the omni filter so here went a little crazy i took the image of the ocean and then i um, took a second one with a wide open aperture but i and added the foils and i just love how the the colors turned out and how dreamy this image is and this is taken with the omni one again the uh, colorful one that i love so much i have the feeling most of my images are taken with that one um with double exposures and then whenever you see the lines in the background that's not the, the landscape it's the omni filter that creates the um repetition of of um, um the multiple mountain lines and it, what i love is you can go from crazy colors very saturated to these um, pastel tones and it's all done with the same um glass wand it just depends on what kind of light you have available that night or that day. So it will mimic that. So if you have an overcast day, the colors will look more muted, more pastel. If it is a bright day, it will all look more saturated. Birds, 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 I love seagulls. <laughs> I just love the sense of freedom. This one was actually taken with the, with the, with the um, Edge 35. And um, that was like a big win because if you have ever tried to photograph a moving bird with a manual lens, you know how hard that is. I was so proud about this picture that it turned out sharp. And then I just added a second layer of um, an out of focus image. More colors and birds and colors. Here I use the foils and I love that. You know, it's just a regular scene. We have seen that so many times, but um, I don't know. I mean, you could call it crazy, but I just love what you can do at the tip of your fingertips. Just change the scene from bright daylight to something that makes you look twice and stop. I did the same here. I just love how the orange complements the blue in the image. And here I was using not the seahorse one, but one of those very similar one. And um, I was just holding it. So I took a picture of the wand in this case and caught the reflection behind me. So you can do so many things with these ones. And I'm, I bet there are many more things other people can come up with. Um, I try to challenge myself to, to come up with a new concept or a new um, system um, every week or so. Um, it doesn't always work, but when it does, it's, it's just sheer magic. Here I um, used one of the um, smaller um, ones, um, what are they called, expansion? That was an expansion set, the uh, flare, um, the flare ones. And I um, used a double exposure. So the first image that I took is the regular image. And then I took one that is out of focus and I made that a double exposure. And in the one that is in focus, I was holding the flare one and that stretched out the lights. And I really love the effect. Same pier. Oh, yeah. And I did a, a series on this pier that was part of my um, COVID restrictions. I couldn't travel like everyone else. So I decided to um, uh, work with this pier and come up with as many possible versions as I could imagine. And um, that's part of this series. So I took pictures from that pier. It's another um, Omni wand and the reflection that I caught in the wand. So I basically took a picture of the wand, um, but it's also double exposure. So I took the picture of the seagull and then um, added the image of the wand. And this is the multicolor wand and the same um, image. So I turned that into double exposure. And um, this is the newer expansion set, the golden reflective ones. They look like mirrors. And it's still part of the whole um, peer series. So this the same peer, and this is looking at the peer. Um, so I spent like weeks in the same location looking at the same thing and tried to come up with different ways of looking at it. And I went home many nights and it didn't work, but Lens Baby helped me to come up with new ideas and more ideas. Um, same here, here I stretched the lights out again. 
Oh, and I love when you can do things like that. It looks like painting, like a painting, but it's a photograph. It just makes me so happy. And those I do with the foils. Um, sometimes I help, I hold multiple foils. Um, and I always go a little with the, the um, color of the sky and I try to find something that complements that um, color. So I was using the bluish foils that would complement the pink and the orange in the sky. And I think it turned out really nice. And, is that, and that's uh, part of the deluxe collection? That is the biggest one. Yes, the deluxe, exactly. Mm -hmm, that has the foils. And then here, I mean, like I said, it's hard to um, capture something that is moving with a manual lens, but that is also the beauty, you know, when you um, have to slow down, sometimes your accidents are your best image. So this one, um, it's not everyone's cup of tea, I get it, but I love it. I love the movement and I love the, the whole colors and everything about it. And what Lens Baby does for me, it gets me in the moment. You know, I, I don't worry about the outcome anymore because I know it, to a degree it's not, um, I can't control it. And um, that is something I really enjoy. Um, I think you have to be open for those moments and for those opportunities. And if you are, I mean, things like that can happen. It's just magical. It's the same peer again. And this is now part of my newer work where I tried to um, introduce more color. And that was actually inspired by working with the, with the Omni ones for such a long time that I realized, man, I want to see more color in my work. And um, so I kept doing that and I started holding more things in front of my lens because now I'm inspired. I'm like, okay, what else could I try? And then we go back to the Velvet 28. Um, I remember there was a day was like a little uninspired. Like, what do I do today? Oh, why don't I take the Velvet 28 out? And I remember that it has this quality um, of, of melting the, the bokeh into these beautiful dots. So I just put it on the ground and I just love how these images turn out. Wonderful. Um, well, Uta, I think um, we're going to have to switch over to Kathleen here fairly quickly, but um, just Absolutely. a note from Craig about the foils that they're part of the expansion pack as well as the Omni Deluxe collection too. So at the end, we'll quickly go through a few more of the products. And then of course, on the camera store website, um, if you look at Lens Baby, we have all the sales stuff right on our hero banner on the front of the camera store.com. Um, and of course, you can go over to Lens Baby as well and take a look at all the different options. Um, and so yeah, we'll stick around um, until the end, Uta, we'll get to a few more questions that we had for you and uh, for now I'm going to introduce our next speaker uh, which is Kathleen Clemens who's an award-winning photographer speaker and author and workshop leader from the coast of Maine um, she's primarily a nature photographer who specializes in photographing flowers and she's known for her creative use of natural light and unique artistic photographs um, and so we'll welcome uh, Kathleen on to the screen here Thank you. Thank you. I'm really, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to help you celebrate your new partnership. And I'm always happy to talk about Lens Baby. Oh, sorry. To, uh, do and that. I'm so, actually, uh, while, while you're getting set up, I'm going to go ahead and pop uh, your website into the chat so people can check out okay. some of the educational resources and courses that you have. Um, so if anyone Thank wants you. to check out um, more of what Kathleen has to offer, please do pop over to KathleenClemensEducation.org. Great, great. So I'm going to share my screen and show you how I use Lens Babies to create my flower portraits. Okay. All right. So uh, I found Lens Baby in 2005. I was on a workshop with Tony Sweet in the White Mountains of New Hampshire, and there was one woman going around with this little squishy, bendy lens, and it's nothing I'd ever seen before, but when we got together at the end of the workshop and shared our work, I was just blown away by the beautiful painterly images she was creating in camera. So uh, the night I got home, I uh, went online and ordered my first Lens Baby. So this was 2005 and it was the Lens Baby 2.0 to see on the left. And it does have the bellows design and you changed apertures with those little discs that you can see on the right. So here is my, these are my very first straight out of the box Lens Baby images. Um, it was in November when I got the lens and um, it was my focus good? No, so it, we, you know, it really wasn't, but there was something here 
that was just magic for me. I mean, I'd only been shooting for a year. I was learning about depth of field. I was blown away by the fact that I could control how much was in focus um, because I'd I'd been shooting on automatic and was really just learning. Um, And there was there was just something in here that I fell in love with. So, you know, the next year I started to really get the hang of Lens Baby and how to focus and how to to um, to use it to create what was becoming a passion, and that was photographing flowers. Before that, I was I was photographing landscapes. So it all kind of came together at the same time. My my decision to to spend more of my efforts learning how to photograph flowers um, in a way that sort of expressed the way that I saw them. Okay, and the more I worked at it, I got better. I could place my focus where I wanted it. I could control how much. Uh, I want and fo- wanted in focus. This is an old one, but it's one that I still dearly love. So one of the questions I get most often is what are your favorite lens babies? Um, and that's like choosing a favorite child in that I have three sons and that can vary by the week or the day sometimes. And, um, and so I hate to pick a favorite because there are so many I love, but I will talk about the two that I reach for most often. And that would be the Composer Pro with the Sweet 50 Optic. That's the one that um, that Craig showed and Evelyn showed as well. And um, if I have that on my camera for flower portraits, I'm using the Lens Baby Macro Kit. Those little filters that you see at the bottom, which screw right onto the optic, and primarily the plus four. It's the one I use most, or I'm using one of the velvets. And if I have to choose a favorite velvet, or the one that I use most often, it's the Velvet 85, all right? So I want to talk about why I love them for creating my my flower portraits. I want to break it down a little bit. So the the first thing that is that I love selective focus and blur. Um, I like to um, I like to say that I like to dance on the edge of focus, seeing how little I can have in focus and get away with it, but still tell the story that I want to tell because I'm telling a story with every flower portrait that I do. And I sort of see the world in selective focus um, and in macro. I have tr- more trouble with the big picture. Um, I'm, it's much easier for me to zoom in on, uh, on a detail and highlight that with selective focus. And so for the selective focus, I'm using the, the Sweet 50 in the Composer or in the, in the Spark. I do still love a bellows lens. I feel like I have a little bit um, more flexibility and control in, in that. So you can see here, it's just a small amount in focus and, and, and just surrounded by this gorgeous and gentle blur that Lens Baby pro- provides. I can draw your eye to exactly where I want it in the composition by bending that composer toward the area that I want in focus. Okay, I can go deeper depth of field for a little bit more in focus, still have some sharp focus surrounded by blur. Uh, I can, the other reason that I love it is I can create a painterly look in camera. You saw Yuta's beautiful paintings that she does, you know, with her camera. This is wide open with the Velvet 56. Um, Just blur and color and shape, okay? You can't get this kind of a look straight out of of a regular camera. This is with the Sweet 50, pretty much wide open, I think, or F2, somewhere around there. So I feel like I'm I'm painting with my camera, and that is one of the questions I get most about my work is, you know, how do you get that painterly look? And this is how, and this is done in camera. It's nothing that I'm doing in post-processing to get that. Speaking of post-processing, one of the other things I love about my lens babies is that they require little or no post-processing. You know, don't get me wrong. I love post-processing. It's fun. It's really fun to see different ways that you can, where you can take an image. But I also, um, I love being able to create an effect in camera, and that's going to give me more time to make more photos and not know that I have to spend time in post-processing. Okay, so these are, these are straight out of my camera. The other thing I love is the versatility in effect that I can get with a single lens baby. So I can go from a lot of softness, really shallow depth of field, as I have here with this peony, okay? Not a whole lot in focus, just just for me, just enough. A lot of softness, not so much in the detail. Or I can switch it up and I can go to slightly more detailed. Here you can see that I've got some petal edges in focus. This is with the Velvet 85. So there's that gorgeous overlay of ethereal glow and, and softness. So I, you know, I can go really soft 
I can start to stop down depending on the story that I want to tell, right? This is with the sweet 50. Velvet 85 again. Velvet 56 for this one, right? So I can start to get that detail. So I don't want you to think that you have to have, you know, all blur. This, you know, it's very, very versatile. So I can go even to much more detailed as I have with, with this dahlia here with the same lens. So the, the possibilities are absolutely endless for photographing flowers with these. And, and how much I'm going to have in focus and how much detail I want depends again on the story I want to tell. You know, I think when you do portraits of people, you are telling stories and I feel like that I'm doing that with flowers as well. Right, so I can get the deeper fit, depth of field if I want it and just have the blur around the edges, okay? I can pull out detail. I can highlight water drops and petal texture if I want to with the same lens. The other thing that I really like is they're lightweight for hand holding. You know, even the velvet, which is probably the heaviest one, I can hand hold easily and um, I, I, I can still focus really well hand held and as long as that continues, uh, I'll continue to do that. So it, it is one of my favorite things about the Lens Baby. The other thing is that a Lens Baby makes me slow down. It makes me really look at my subject and consider the choices, right? So how much needs to be in focus to tell that story that I mentioned? So I've really got to look at my subject and decide, you know, where do I want to draw the eye? Is there something I want to hide with a blur? What do I want to highlight? telling stories, so many different options and choices. So I'm slowing down, I'm really looking, right? And then, you know, where should I place that focus? Again, you're slowing down because you've got to decide where am I going to focus? Where am I going to tilt this lens? Into what direction am I going to tilt? How much tilt, okay? Lens babies make me pay more attention to both exposure and composition as well. And slowing down and paying more attention has made me a better photographer. And for that, I'm very grateful. Thank you. And I'm going to unshare my screen now. Hang on. And Beautiful. I'm sure you have questions for all of us. We do. Um, lots of comments that these are just dreamy and beautiful flowers. Um, a question from Yvonne Weber. How close to the subject are you uh, when photographing these painterly flowers? It, that is uh, going to depend on the size of the flower and whether I want to include background. So the uh, Velvet 56 has a minimum focus distance of five inches away. So I'm probably not closer than that um, very often. Um, although if I'm using the Sweet 50 with a plus four macro adapter, I'm probably more like three inches away. Okay. And what camera are you using when you're photographing these images? Um, Tim thinks it's a Canon R6, is that correct? Uh, I'm currently using a Canon R5, but the images in that slideshow were taken from everything from the Canon 5D to the 5D Mark II, 5D Mark III, 5D Mark IV, and now the, the, uh, the Canon R5. And is there a reason why you prefer to use the full frame uh, cameras? It's just what, what I'm used to, and I'm, yeah, nothing, nothing in particular. Um, there were just some features in the, the R5 that I wanted that the 5D Mark IV didn't have, and it's just what I'm used to. No special reason. Fantastic. Yeah, lots of magical work. Well, why don't we bring everybody back on, and, um, and we'll, we'll switch views here so we can see everyone at the same time, because we can go back and ask lots of questions. I mean, before we get into some of this, uh, these conversations here, um, I just want to thank all of you for sharing uh, both your, all of your photography and, uh, and Craig as well, those early examples. And I think the common theme is really just stepping out of your usual comfort zone and creating magic and getting into those moments and looking at your photography in a different way. So um, thank you again for, for sharing all of those. Um, what should we start with? <laughs> um, so I guess the the first question that I'm going to ask um, Uta is what is your absolute favorite uh, lens baby lens to work with? You talked a lot about how you just love the Omni system as your favorite thing. So, but what is your favorite go-to? 
Um, my favorite go-to is probably my Sweet 50, just because it was my first lens baby and it always um, makes me happy to use it. I most recently got the Edge 80 and I am in love with it. So that's my second favorite. I love basically every optic that you can, can throw into the Composer Pro to make things easy. So you're using them in the Composer Pro, not the, not the Spark, correct? Depends on my mood. Sometimes I feel like the squishy one and sometimes like the composer i have the composer one and two so i'm all over the place whatever it is this is the fun part for me not to know what will happen today <laughs> it's like oh okay oh i haven't used that in a long time so that's the fun part for me and craig since you have the lens right in front of you could you just give yeah. a really brief overview of how the composer pro works and um and yeah, what's absolutely. actually happening yeah um, I think the biggest thing about the Composer Pro, I'm going to, well, I better maximize me uh, so I can actually focus. And there we go. And the biggest thing about the Composer Pro is that it has the optic swap system, as as does the, the Spark. So you can see you have the Sweet 35, and then it's in the Composer Pro uh, body. And these are two different parts. I can take this out and put in a new optic. So I can take out the Sweet 35 and I can now put in the, the Twist 60. The Twist 60 does not need to be tilted. So I'm going to straighten this out. Just eyeball it pretty straight. It looks pretty straight there, at least for a Zoom call when I can't really look at it. And um, that is part of um, the optic swap system. So there's no optics in between, you know, I'm doing magic here. I'm sticking my finger all the way through my lens. <laughs> and, but what it does is it gives you a focus and tilt mechanism. So, uh, let's put yet another optic in here, which is the sweet, uh, the edge 35. Now I've just changed two different focal lengths and three different effects. So the edge 35 has a flat field of focus when it is tilted all the way, it's got so narrow of a slice that you saw that slice going off in my images. I'm not sure you could see it over Zoom, but uh, well, but it, of that groom on the um, the ski lift. And that is just almost perpendicular to the image plane because this Schleimflug, Schleimflug effect or um, <laughs> rule around uh, optics that this ties into when you have a flat field of focus is it's exponential. The more tilt you have, the, the more uh, the, the slice of focus goes away from the image. Okay, I'm getting into the weeds here because I geek out on this stuff. Um, but yeah, we, we got a, we got a said, real we've, Craig on the time. We've got an optic swap system, this is mine, and we have two different optic bodies. So we can uh, put it into the spark. Uh, and again, there's nothing but a, a focus and tilt mechanism here. And I, this is a 50 millimeter flat field um, and I will stop geeking out, but that I think explains something to somebody, but I don't know, probably brought up more questions. <laughs> it probably brought answered. more questions. And I'm just gonna give a quick little plug though, because if someone's interested in that, um, we actually have the Lens Baby Optic Swap intro collection, and this is part of the, the promotion. It's 15% off, and we're also throwing in a bonus Lens Baby Spark 2.0. Um, and that came up as another question. Some people are asking about what lens is the squishy lens. Do you have that one with you, That's, Craig? Yeah, that I've got the Spark 1.0 here because I never get anything current. I just get all the the nice. stuff that is either like seconds or whatever. But anyhow, this is a squishy lens. You've got the you've got the Spark 2.0 for mirrorless, and this is essentially the same form factor as the Spark. Uh, 2.0 for SLRs, with the exception of the the Spark 1.0 had a plastic mount, and now the the Spark 2.0 has a metal mount. Excellent. And for Kathleen, uh, a question or a, a comment and a question that Tim loves your images with the velvets and the sweets. Um, have you ever thought of using the edge or edges with flowers? I, I have, and I think that um, for the shape of flowers, I find the edge a little bit limiting. I think it works well when I have a long linear flower. 
you know, uh, with a long stem, but most of the time a sweet spot is going to work better for me than a slice of focus through a flower. Fantastic. And there's been a lot of questions, uh, maybe this is for Craig, um, about micro four thirds. Um, are the, the lenses, um, which, which works best with micro four thirds as far as the lenses go? So I love micro four thirds. I still shoot my GH1, my Panasonic, I love it. And the, my favorite lens baby for micro four thirds is the Soul 22. We specifically built that for the, uh, my, the, the small sensor and it's a 22 millimeter focal length. It's a fixed aperture at f3.5, but the effect, it looks like a full frame sweet spot lens. And so it is amazing. It's easy to learn. It's easy to use. It has bokeh blades that come in and will create texture in the out of focus areas and outside of the sweet spot. It's amazing. So that is my number one uh, recommendation. And I will say if, if you're attracted to the multiple effects that you can get from the trio, this has three different optics in it. Um, the in-between setting is magic on the micro four thirds because it looks in completely different directions. It feels like you're looking into a different dimension and putting it into the same image. It's one exposure, two images combined. It's really amazing. Excellent. And I have, uh, I'm going to circle back to a question for Uta about the Omni filters. Um, there's obviously a lot of different options. Um, do you have a favorite filter or a favorite wand that you like to use? I think this is my favorite. Yeah, that one is actually one that I use very often because I love the colors that you can create with it. And um, you might remember there was this picture with a double exposure where you see the outline that um, filter and the bird in it. So it's very versatile. I really love that one. But there are also those uh, quilted foils in the color expansion set. And I love, love, love those. I think those are my favorites. They are very versatile. I, I want to do a quick uh, tutorial here. These, the way this works is you can either put your wands directly onto the um, <clears throat> the ring, uh, the Omni ring that screws onto your camera, or you can put it onto these arms to get more uh, angle and you can point it down into your lens. And so these arms give you all sorts of three dimensional um, adjustments to those filters. And I just want to say that I am always a sucker for nice packaging of things. And a lot of the lens baby packaging is very nice. They've thought of everything. And I love that it comes in a great little pouch um, that you can keep everything organized in. It has little spots for everything. Um, and there's something also about just the way it feels and how strong the magnets are and everything. It's, it's, you know, it's a very good quality product. Um, so if you are, if you are local, you got to come to the camera store and actually just give it a feel, play around with it um, and just see what it's all about there. Um, another question here for Craig uh, is, about the Lens Baby Obscura 16 millimeter pa mirrorless pancake lens, um, how sharp is it for wide angle? It's not sharp. <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> if you want a sharp, if you want a sharp lens, you don't want it. Um, I would say that it has. Uh, let me explain what it is, though. Uh, it has three different, uh, three different types of effects, and three very dark apertures. So we've got a pinhole sieve, which has hundreds of holes that are all designed by uh, Drew, who's just an amazing engineer, optical mechanical engineer that, uh, that we work with and has been at Lens Baby for almost 14 years, 15 years now. Um, and we have the zone plate, which is a series of concentric rings with a pinhole at the center that's the same well, I'm not going to geek out on that. Okay, so, and then we have a pinhole, which is a standard pinhole. All of these, you can see it's on glass. So we, we use black chrome. Um, it's like, it's the same as like semiconductors, the way they're made. Um, we use black chrome, but instead of making a, a chip out of it, they're making a lens out of it. It's not cheap. It's awesome, but what it does is it makes you look for, uh, look at your scene and say how through this composition 
through leading lines, through contrast, am I going to convey something about this scene that's true to me? And that is a challenge. Any time I, any time I pick up a ball to play a sport, I am taking on a challenge because there's all sorts of rules. This is giving you rules that no other camera lens has. And so if you want to master those rules, just like Uta said, you know, you, you went out for 12 weeks. Like who does that? You spent 12 weeks being frustrated with the product and then you started making magic like you just showed us. That's that's phenomenal. But that challenge is what Lens Baby offers you is something to learn that can help you grow as an artist and that can that you can overcome those hurdles which you're intentionally choosing because we're not giving you something that's going to be perfect right out of the box. You got to figure it out. I love that. Um, okay, we're going to wrap things up here pretty quickly. So I want to ask uh, Kathleen, if someone wanted to get started with floral photography, what is the best advice that you'd have for them? Um, how to just, what should they do to get started? Um, I, I think one of the most important things with floral, photo floral photography is um, learning how to light the flowers. I use all natural light, and, and I think that that's why my flowers have a certain look. Um, and the other thing is to not get too hung up on having the, the perfect lens for a flower. I mean, you saw the different effects I got and that's only two, uh, you know, of my lens babies. But I think I, I think that people sometimes think that lens, that flower photography is easy until they try it. <laughs> and then they find out that that it's it's really not. But you know, you, you've got it with any kind of photography, you've got to start with the light, you've got to see the light you know, and you've got to find out how to use it in the best way to capture your subject. So I, I, I think light is the way to start um, and, and just slowing down and seeing the flowers and trying to decide, you know, what is it, what, what attracted you to that flower? Is it color? Is it shape? Is it texture? Is it, does it have a funky petal, which is my personal favorite, um, you know, and, and, and slow down, see, and shoot it. Wonderful, thank you. And Uta, do you have any sort of last words of inspiration uh, to get people outside exploring with their photography? I think make yours, listen to your voice, what matters to you, is it flowers, is it dogs, is it cars, whatever. Don't try to imitate what you see, um, just listen to your voice and then shoot that and like I said, it can take up to two, 12 weeks or more. <laughs> take your time. Just take your time, explore, have fun while you do it, and understand that the um, process is the goal. It's not the goal. So if that makes sense. Thank you. And uh, Craig, of course, we just started this partnership. Um, we're so delighted to be the Canadian dealer. People can shop the camera store.com um, to see all these launch promos. And you guys have put together some great stuff, loaded up with swag. And so we're very excited. Um, can you tell us what else is on the horizon? What do you have coming up next for you, Craig? Oh, well, you hinted at one there and uh, that I wasn't ready for. But yeah, we've got we've got a way to attach a lot of different stuff. You know. You, uh, cinematographers go out and they they put they put fishing line across or or you know various things across their their lenses to get flare to get various things various different effects that that they can't get and we want to make it so like the world is your oyster and so we are working on ways for for you to be able to take things from wherever and just load them in front of your lens and see what they do and uh and and not have to hold them in a hand or stretch your fishing line across that kind of thing so it's in the works i can't talk about specifics but we got that and uh i know kathleen and uta are are, are helping us beta test other stuff um that uh that i just am blown away by the images it's it is such a privilege to work with these photographers that that go out and make it their own i mean these aren't i'm not, i'm not responsible for any of those images it's their vision and they made it work and they went over the hurdles to learn this for for decade you know or longer and it's pretty exciting 
Fantastic. Well, thanks again to all three of you. And thanks to the audience, too. You guys have been fantastic. Lots of great questions and comments. Um, of course, there's lots more TCS TV live events that are coming up soon. So make sure you head over to thecamerastore.com. You can join from wherever you are in the world. And if you like what you saw, we do ask you to please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can be notified and we can catch you again very soon.